Hi, I'm back here again in SwiftPos back office, and in this video I'm going to be talking about clerks and clerk security. This may actually run on for a couple of videos because the subject is quite broad and there are quite a lot of moving parts to it, um, and I'd like to make my way through all of them quite thoroughly uh, to give you a good understanding of what you can do with clerks, uh, and especially with uh, clerk security in SwiftPos back office and at the pos itself. There's quite a lot of different ways that you can manage clerk security and clerk accountability, depending on the level of security that you need to implement at your venue. So I'm going to start here in clerks and clerk records. The clerk records screen is where you'll add and remove uh, clerks or edit existing ones if you need to. Both of those operations are quite straightforward. If I want to edit an existing clerk, say clerk number two, I can highlight that clerk and click on full edit. And now I can go ahead and edit all of the details about that clerk. So I could change the name to something else if I wanted to. If I wanted to give this clerk a specific clerk number, I could do so. Um, and any details that I might need to know about the clerk, such as their phone number or email address, I could also change. By default, when you create a new clerk, there's not going to be a password set for that clerk. However, you can set one if you choose to do so. A little bit further down here, you'll see a couple of fields for clerk group and security group. Uh, and I'll probably cover these in more detail in a future video, because there are quite a few different moving parts to those two elements. Um, however, if you click on each of the drop downs, you'll see all of the different clerk groups that are currently set up and all of the different security groups. Now, they do have different purposes at the POS, um, and you might not have an operator in the same um, clerk group as the security group, um, or vice versa. You may also like to set a pay rate. This is used when clerks clock on and off. Um, it helps to estimate um, exactly how much uh, value in terms of staff um, is being used at that particular time or across a particular period. There are some reports that cover um, that kind of data, which I will get into in a future video. The purchase request and purchase order limits are used when the clerk is working here in back office ordering stock or something like that. Uh, and you might like to set a limit on the amount of stock that that person can order uh, before an authorized person is uh, alerted by email. You can also specify a clerk role as well, if you have roles set up, which I don't. There's also going to be a field for preferred language where you can choose a default language for that uh, particular clerk. Um, and that's used if other languages are programmed into the till, um, for example, products and things like that, um, where when that clerk logs on, it's going to display those products and various other buttons in the, the preferred language of that clerk. And of course, you can add um, notes about that, that clerk if you choose to do so. You'll also notice up the top here, there is a tick that says terminal clerk. That basically means that this particular clerk is active at the terminals and can make transactions. If this were unticked, this clerk would only be able to log on in SwiftPos back office if they were permitted to do so. There's also a tick here for inactive. So if a clerk leaves um, or perhaps uh, goes on holiday, you can set them to inactive for the duration if you choose to do so, just to lock anyone out from using that clerk number um, while they're not there. When you finish making all of the changes to the clerk that you need to make, you can click save and then close. To create a new clerk, you can simply click on new and fill out all of the different fields as required. Each clerk number is going to be unique, so you can't use the same clerk number twice. And once you finish making the changes you need to make, you can save your changes and close. If there is a clerk which no longer works for the company um, and you want to remove that clerk from the clerk records, you can do that quite easily simply by highlighting the clerk and clicking on delete. And that clerk has now been removed. However, that clerk, of course, will still be active at the point of sale 
until you send a full update down to the terminal. So really that's the basics of how to set up new clerks, how to edit existing clerks, and how to remove old clerks. There was quite a lot of stuff that I've skipped over. Um, like I said, I'm going to be covering that in a future video, um, particularly with the clerk groups, security groups, and the different clerk options you have at the pos. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.